uh, also every Tuesday on the show. We go in and decide who gets it and who doesn't. I've got one right away if you guys are... Oh, tandem. Look at that, huh? Tandem. Holy shnikes. Let's stay on the Vikings track here. Okay. Who doesn't get it? People who still think the NFL salary cap is <laughs> fake. So the Minnesota Vikings are a great example of this if you're still holding out for whatever reason. This is not necessarily going to be a commentary on Kirk Cousins because the Vikings also have highly paid players at safety, aging players, right? Even Adam Thielen, like the restructures are still highly paid players. But the Vikings have an offensive line problem for years. Everybody who watches the Vikings play over the past three or four, you say, let's survey the millions of Vikings fans across the country. And I do think there are millions of Vikings fans across the country. What's the biggest problem with this team offensively? 90% of people would say the offensive line, right? And so if the salary cap was fake and you could just do whatever you wanted despite the other contracts on the roster, would you run it back with the same players and add Jesse Davis in free agency, who was one of the worst offensive linemen in the NFL, according to PFF, on the worst offensive line in the NFL, according to PFF? Is that how you would? Okay, we all agree this is a crisis. How are we going to fix it? The cap is fake. You can do whatever you want, right? You can just sign. You can just you can just move money around. You can just figure it out. And they chose Jesse Davis, Uncle Jesse, and Oli Udo, and and Wyatt Davis in a competition yeah. at right guard. Yeah, the, yeah, the cap is not fake. Well, and I also love the responses that that seem to be directed. I think more towards you than me. Whenever the Vikings sign a, a guy, I mean, it can be to a five dollar contract. You get the comment. See, Kirk's contract doesn't stop them from signing guys. Yeah, like no one, no one has ever said that. By the way, the the, the commentary isn't. People right. are mistaking it. You think you think I'm saying that Kirk, that Kirk's contract prevents you from signing players? No, no, no. I'm saying Kirk's contract prevents you from building a Super Bowl caliber roster. Right. There's but, a huge difference. Of course, you can sign. There's there's a couple million here. You can find some players. Sheldon Richardson. But Patrick Michael Patrick Peterson, Peterson Richardson, and Zadarius Smith are not impact big signings. They're nice signings, which is great. If you can work between the uh, margins in free agency, that's great. But when we're talking about free agent signings, we're talking about first or second day guys who sign big contracts. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about, you see the Vikings sign Dick, Dick Butkus, they can sign people. Well, yeah, but he just signed for $5. So like, that's <laughs> not part of the example here. I just yeah. love the fact and the Smith contract, you know, three years up to forty-seven million. You see how big that contract is? Actually, it wasn't worth that much. So anyway, well, and Jesse, I think I think the contract for Jesse Davis is like one year, two million dollars, yeah. or something like it's that. A bargain basement. I mean, contract. Brandon Scherf signed for seventeen million dollars a year. Brandon Scherf is one of the five best guards in the NFL. Yeah. So if if the salary cap was fake, and you were just looking to sign the best possible player to fix your right guard problem, you would have signed Brandon Scherf but Correct. you couldn't afford him because the salary cap is not fake. It is manipulatable and creative capologists like Rob Brzezinski, who's been one of the best in the NFL for 20 years, can find ways to, to play the shell game. But at a certain point, like you have to, you still have to pay for those players. Yeah. So the, the shell game is really just moving money into the future mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, turning roster bonuses into, into signing bonuses and spreading the length of contracts, et cetera. So I just want to point that out. Like that yesterday slapped you in the face if you think the salary cap is fake. And and maybe Jesse Davis with a change of scenery and a change of scheme and better coaching will be better. And that would be great. But Brandon Scherf was the answer. He was just too expensive. Uh, Declan, you want to go next? Yeah, I'll go next. Here we go. I'll give you a Minnesota wild one. You know, yesterday we were talking about Colorado's top line, um, obviously being very lethal. Nathan McKinnon, Mika Ratnan, a lot of firepower. But you know what? Damn it. You know who gets it? The Minnesota Wilds top line. The Minnesota Wilds top line, especially in Kirill Kaprizov and Matt Zuccarello. Last 24 games dating back to February for Kaprizov. 29 points, 18 goals, 11 assists for Matt Zuccarello Zuccarello? and his long twig. Past Kaprizov. Over to Zuccarello. Did you say a long Holding. twig? Long twig. 
He, does, yeah, he has like one of the longest sticks. That was not an innuendo. <laughs> just a telephone uh, One of the pole. longest sticks. Uh, yeah, it's telephone huge. Telephone pole. It's humongous. He's at the, he's at the blue line, just poking at the goalies. <laughs> what's what strange? He's a little guy. But he's got a big twig. Yeah, if he was like six foot five, like Zdeno Chara size, and he had a big twig, like that, that makes sense. Zuccarello's like as big as I am, height wise. Yeah. Is there like okay, a, what is, what is the rule? I mean, you can't just be standing at the blue line with a twenty foot hockey stick, right? Just you know, I, mixing it up. Yeah, I, Judd likes a short stick. Judd likes Judd yeah, likes a little, a little just a, a little and not much control. curve on that, so he can just so he can just slap that side. Uh, have you guys Russian. have you guys been to the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown before? No, it's like have. legitimately number Dude, one of my museums to see. One of the best of things in that museum is one of the one of Babe Ruth's. It was like the bat Babe Ruth used to hit sixty home runs or you know, whatever it was, nineteen twenty seven. Yeah, it is a telephone pole. Like it's Ill, you can't use a bat that big in today's There's baseball. Babe Ruth. <laughs> That's literally swinging a tree. It's just ridiculous. That's another home run. Um, but with Zuccarello also with 27 points in the last 22 games, that's a combined 56 points between these two dudes since February in basically 24 games played because Kaprizov's played a few more games than Zuccarello over that span. And you want even more geekier? You want to get a little more geeky here? A little analytics with these two on here? Because Matt that's Zuccarello... Sure. Has spent time with Kirill Kaprizov more than any other four. They have spent 673 minutes together when on the ice. As long as some so, marriages. It is. It basically, <laughs> longer than a lot of marriages out there. 50% in a divorce, not Kaprizov and Zuccarello. Yep. Uh, when these two are on the ice, their Corsi 4 is 54%. So meaning when they're on the ice, they're out possessing the team 54% of the time. When which, is, which is good because you don't you don't get like 80 20 ratios like if correct like yeah, 55 60 is, is like is really good right it's very very good if you're in the 60 yeah. percent that's absurd that's absolutely absurd when zuccarello is without kaprizov on the ice his course you for 41 percent meaning which is terrible that, which is awful which means the, the other team is heavily out possessing um of the wild when zuccarello is on the ice for with kaprizov uh, in general, they've still created a ton of goals together. They are plus 45 and only 28 goals allowed. So they're a plus 27 when on the ice. These two dudes get it. They literally provide the Wild a lethal top line. Don't and get, get the flag. damn flag, oh, Zolgad. Oh, get, flag, get the flag. Come on, put way, the stick down. Way, the too, flag. Much, the way flag. too much oh, positivity to not get the flag. There we go. There we go. Hold on. Stick and flag. Stick and flag. Stick and flag. How many arm play? Is there like... You have, like stage, you have like now. stage hands over there. How many yeah. arms? Everything's in play. Everything's it's in play. Stella. Stella's I got the whole room holding. here. I got tons of stuff. Tons and of by stuff. the way, for the people asking, when are you guys going to wave the Vikings flag? Well, there is a flag sitting above Judd's head on the wall up there. It's ready yeah. to be waved. They have to well, give us a reason to wave the flag. Well, and don't mm -hmm. forget, don't forget, I still have the Roller Dome 1980s towel. That's right. The Roller Dome. The Roller Dome. Mike Love Ditka, head of the Metrodome. Ditka. All right, Judd, All right. who gets it? Who does? You know what? I'm going to continue the positivity vibe because the posit positivity is my middle name and it's so much fun. Um, I'm going to give a shout out who gets it to you, the Minnesota sports fans. And here's why. Timberwolves games. D'Lo complained about the dead ass fans. And instead of you guys getting mad and being like, what a whiny Brad. I don't like him. You said, you know what? Screw it. He's right. We're going to stand up until the Wolves score at their first basket and that place has become electric target center is a dump and and <laughs> it's not that i mean it's not that it's a, bad like it's, it's, a, it's sort of a it's, it's not it's like a, the metrodome a was a dump now nah, target center now just uh, it's not good but anyway you fans are doing a great job there it's fun uh it's loud <laughs> wolves fans for for all we we rag on basketball fans in this town who often have nothing to cheer for you know what you prove time and time again, if you're given a good product, you will come out and support the, the Wolves and, quite frankly, the Gophers, too, when they're good. But here's the thing across town. Every team, I believe, especially in the sport of hockey, that, that has success and gets on a, a roll has a few things. Ordinarily, a roster that is not just good, but where players seem to engage with each other other which the wild does it seems to be a very tight-knit group but there's always something from the fan base that sort of sparks sparks things on and saturday night after mark andre Fleury, the flower uh won his first game against the blue jackets i think we got it i think we got it some enterprising fan you know who you are and congratulations 
tossed a bouquet of flowers onto the ice that Mark andre Fleury, when I believe he was named the second star of that game or third star, picked up. And I am willing to bet every Flurry win now will be followed by bouquets, multiple ones, which is actually really sort of cool. And, and despite the fact that he has been, of course, called the flower for basically his entire life, he said this was the first time that a fan had thrown a bouquet of flowers onto the ice. So, Minnesota sports fans, that was incredibly cool. You're doing a great job. I'm going to give you a who gets it because I appreciate your efforts. I'm going to, it's funny, you, uh, you, I wouldn't say you stole it, but you kind of, you, no, you, you stole it. Okay. Because I'm going to, I'm going to. I found the guy's name. Uh, I think it was Dane Mizutani, actually. Uh, Pioneer Press tracked this dude down. Oh, mm-hmm. he did? So you know yeah. who gets it? Anthony Variano oh, gets that's awesome, it. awesome, Dane. He's yeah. the one that brought the flowers to the X. He's, I, he said, I didn't know I was going to be the only one. I thought it would be, be kind of cool. Nice. And so I think you're going to see tonight against the Flyers. Is he expected to start Marc-Andre Fleury tonight? Yes, he's going he's gonna to start tonight. Nice. No other lineup changes but him. So, you know, they they should beat the Flyers, but we'll see what happens. And I, I would love to see it. Wouldn't it be great? I mean, the tr- now, cool. is it a sustainable long-term thing? Maybe, it can, like, could this live on in five years without Fleury? Like, you see the, you know, the octopi no, being thrown on the ice. But, like, something like that would be a blast. Yeah. And I think far too often, as a Minnesota sports fan, we are so, I don't know if it's just on pins and needles, like, we don't have a lot of great traditions like that in Minnesota uh-huh. sports. We're kind of, we're also just kind of, you know, we're a little passive aggressive. We're a little, you know, we just, whoop, let me just sneak by you there. We're not, we're not like, you know, you go to a Yankees game at the old Yankee Stadium, even the new one, and they are mocking and chanting the names of outfielders and stuff. The closest, we've talked about this before. I went to uh, go for hockey games in the heyday. I started at the University of Minnesota the, uh, the year after they had won back to back cups. And so those three years were just like riding the wave and the momentum of of peak over hockey. And we would get cheat sheets passed out to us in the student section with full details on the opposing goalies, family and like parents and oh, yeah. like phrases to chant and things. And it was sometimes it crossed the line, but it was an atmosphere. And right. it was it was something that you knew would happen when you walked into Mariucci Arena. And then you go to a Twins playoff game at Target Field in 2010, and people are like telling everyone to sit down, sit down, right. you know, relax. It's like, no, we need – Unbelievable. What's, what's the thing that we sit can down. do at these stadiums? And I yeah. love that we're building some of these traditions here. So, yes. Flowers are – I mean – Anthony the, Variano flowers? is an innovator for Anthony bringing those Good- flowers to the X. That's awesome. Yes. It was really, really cool. Love it. It's actually funny because one of my who doesn't get it was going to be, to a degree, Minnesota sports fans – who are afraid of the play-in tournament for the Wolves. Because I get it, right? Like the Wolves are having this successful season. Oh God, we gotta we gotta go through the play-in, right? Oh no, we could we could just lose two games and we're gonna be potentially a 50-win team that doesn't make the play-in tournament. I hate that mentality. Because Minnesota sports fans are always trying to do this where they're they're looking at, well, what can we can we play this team instead? You know, I don't really want to have to play this team eventually you're gonna have to play someone that's really good and if you're really gonna make a run the path there is there's gonna be a goliath in your way and in my opinion you should be embracing your chaos not just having the little toe oh geez what if we what if we have to play in the playing tournament and it's volatile no let's embrace it and also the wolves have been good so they should win that first playing okay. tournament game have that man sight mindset just to play devil's advocate what if i told you paul george is coming back to the clippers tonight one of the top 10 players in the NBA is returning to the Clippers tonight. He's tuning up specifically over the next two to three weeks, starting tonight for that game against the Timberwolves. If they don't get out of the seven seed, does it make you a little more nervous? No. They're getting one of the best players in the NBA. It's back. the play in tournament, it, it's fun. I, yes. It doesn't make me nervous at all. It doesn't make me nervous. And also, go out and, and smack them in the mouth. Go out and show like we're not pushovers anymore. That's what I want to see. I like not it. like Smack oh, geez. that's a hockey mentality. I like oh, that. Oh God. I would like to see that as well. It's just it's just a little a little harder when Paul George is out there. It's true, it is. Just, he's a, he's really good. He's really and maybe good. he'll be rusty. Like you know, like, I mean, he ha- hasn't missed as much time the last two years as as uh, Clay Thompson because Paul George played in. I mean, Paul George played in the first like twenty games of this year, so like yep. he's he's not like going to be super rusty, but. 
hey, he's one of the best players in the NBA. The so, incredible agree, thing is, is that the Spurs m- might now uh, jump the Lake show to get into the play-in tournament yeah. at all. What are the, the Lakers state? are like half a game. The Lakers desperately want to go home. It's best That's my own. Right? They just want to go home. They just want it done. Let's so turn this right, car around and go home. Right now, oh my God, dude, you're you're right. I, I think they're half a game back of them. So the Spurs are a yeah, they're a half game back of the Lakers. The Lakers have, I think they have a brutal schedule too. They want they want out. Did you guys see <laughs> the super out. fan who went back and looked at all the graphics that the Lakers put out when they lose? Did you guys see this little like ninety second clip? It was shared on Twitter yesterday. So this like NBA fan went back and looked at because like you no know one a team loses they'll put out like a generic graphic with the player and like the final score right yeah the, like easy graphic design. Well, this guy was noticing that over the Lakers like skid LeBron James has never once been used in a losing graphic, and he went back and found every single graphic from the Lakers Twitter team for a loss this season, and not once. Has LeBron James been featured as like the main feature or like in the game as the loss for a team? And he, he now his conspiracy theory is LeBron built that into his contract to oh. not have any extra well, negativity against him. In fairness, he is like contending for the scoring title this season. So he he's yeah. not the reason why they're losing most games, but that is kind of funny. Their PR department probably said said that. Yeah, let's, let's not, not make LeBron the poster child for our defeat. And, and by the way, we suck. And Malik Monk was the most. What he like charted each player that was yeah, like the most Monk's featured. Malik athlete. Monk was used has been used uh, like twelve who we, times. Who should yeah. we put on the graphic? Uh, uh, put Malik, Malik you Monk. You know what? There. It ain't in his contract. <laughs> so here's the Lakers' schedule the rest of the way. Not that anyone gives a rip, but we're since we're down this path, they play at Dallas tonight. That's a lot. And by the way, almost all these games are on national TV because the Lakers, the Lakers, and they, these games are scheduled. So at Dallas tonight, at Utah tomorrow night, these are those are two of the five best teams in the Western Conference. Yep. New Orleans fighting for playing, you know, positioning. Denver fighting for positioning. At Phoenix, at Golden State, home against Oklahoma City, and then at Denver fighting probably in the last game of the season. They might lose out. They're definitely missing the plan. <laughs> and they would probably be very happy to do exactly that. It's hilarious. Uh, you know, all right, let's let's get down to it here, men. Who gets it? Mayo Clinic. Especially when it comes to men's health. Okay. You don't have to be ashamed or embarrassed. You know, prostate and urinary health, sexual health issues are more common than you might think. And the good news is they're treatable. Mayo Clinic men's health physicians focus exclusively on urologic care for men, and they are easy to talk with and discuss the latest treatment options. So uh, whether it's peace of mind or maybe you have an issue you'd like to address, they are accepting patients at Mayo Clinic, downtown Minneapolis, across from Target Center, menshealth.mayoclinic.org. That's menshealth.mayoclinic.org. All right, any other? uh, Actually, you know who gets it? Maya Mackey had her first... No potty in the house day yesterday. Oh, way to All go, right. Maya. Maya Mackey. Way to go, way to go Maya. Maya. Way, way to go. That's very good. Exciting. It's, very it's a exciting. nice first step. You probably see? Took, took a That's huge pretty dump quick, outside actually. my door, probably, after I just said that. Yeah. We'll see. As long as they don't pee, I'm not too upset. I got a Vinny. Too. Like Vinny's got a vet appointment tonight, and I'm, I'm hopeful everything will be all right. It's just a normal Vinny. checkup. But Vinny. We'll see what happens. Let me tell you something. Can you chase? You poop in the house again. There's gonna be trouble. <laughs> Put a white rose on your kennel. <laughs> He's like, "What the hell is this?" Just eats it, poops. Uh, all right. Any other, any other final? Who gets it? Who doesn't? From you guys? Uh yeah. Who gets it? Paige Beckers, man. I mean, Dude. we we talked about it with Patrick, but it, it mm-hmm. deserves first half last night. Two of six, four points, bad knee. I mean, she's playing hurt. Second half. Eight of nine, 23 points, double OT win. Um, and I will say, say this again. You'd be hard-pressed, I think. It'd be damn near impossible to find a men's game in this tournament that beats what we saw last night. It was great. Yep. Super high-end I talent. Mean, and and she's, I think, some of the comparisons to Diana Taurasi can be a little cliche and just like, oh, sure. it's, you know. But it's you watch her play, it's... They, they've they got a similar shooting motion, I feel like, similar size, similar just tenacity, confidence, everything, leadership. So The Lynx I, have to get her, right? 
Like they have to find a way. Have, I feel like and the we, WNBA has done, have they ever done that before? Where they like like didn't they kind of usher Lindsey Whalen from Connecticut to Minnesota? Right, like, they, they did. But that. but at the time that she got drafted by the Sun, a bunch of us said they've got to find. I mean, the positive impact here would be so high. Oh Season ticket sales would go through, and and I know, I know in men's sports it's not the, the same now, but. The National Hockey League in the 50s, into the 60s, I think, had, had a territorial draft. So, like, it's no it's no crime. I mean, Paige Beckers in this town would, if not pack the building, she would fill it. Yeah, and like, I think she it would, would sell have, a ton of seats. She would have a similar effect pretty much. I, I think almost anywhere yeah, she goes, she's going to be, you know, a ticket attraction. But here, so oh, it would be so much fun. It would be a blast. Would love to see that happen. I don't know how. I mean, they're always like they're never bad enough to get the number one pick, though, right? Like in recent years, how they get Maya Moore? They were bad that the, number one the pick year before, right? I'm pretty sure. Were yeah, they? were yeah. they that bad? But I think they tanked. Mm-hmm. They were in the middle I, I think, of a. Hmm. Let's were see. they at the time? They they were bad for a while, and then they I thought they got her. Um, they got because they obtained Waylon from Connecticut around that time in a trade. Oh. Yeah, I mean, they did. They had the number one overall pick in the 2011. I WNBA think they were just draft. bad. Yeah, I think they're just bad. That because started that, it. That was before Reeve, or right as she came in. So the year before, yeah. they went thirteen and twenty-one. They were fourth in the conference. They weren't the worst team. They were. They actually had the second worst record in the league. They and then were they bad. must have won. They won. Uh, is there a, was there a lottery in two thousand eleven? So I don't remember. Yeah, the Tulsa Shock went six and twenty-eight that season. But yes, I let, tank tank for Page. Tank for Page. I can help. I know how. I know how to tank. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to be really bad. All right, we got to run. Mackie and Judd, go. write that down, predictions tomorrow, where we admit that we are wrong. And uh, you can always find us on all of our social media pages, too. Score North TikTok, about to hit 5,000. Score North Instagram, about to hit 10,000. Mm. See you guys tomorrow.